Sometimes there are hills and mountains that you vow to return to one day. And today's trip was one of those mountains. And I headed on the long journey through Scotland up to the Northwest Highlands to start this hike up a fantastic mountain. The hike starts as it means to go on rather impressively and you follow this impressive burn up through a series of cascades and waterfalls. Wow, look at this, isn't it lovely? So this is the Ardesi Falls. It really is quite spectacular. And I've been up here once before, uh, many moons ago. Well, 2014, so six years ago, and I took a picture, I'll put that up. I've not taken a picture today because the hill I'm going up to camp on, probably see I've got my camping gear with me, is still in the cloud, but that's forecast to change. Fingers crossed, but this really is uh, one of the highlights of the walk, really, as well as the, the hill I'm going up. These lovely falls, well worth a, a visit. It's not too far off the, the road. I've been walking for maybe 20, 25 minutes and I'm here already, so. Yeah, I'm gonna sit here for a minute. Maybe have a wee bite to eat and then get cracked on up the hill. Lovely. Oh. Right, time to go. After a few jelly babies, I picked myself up from these lovely, lovely falls and headed up through the bracken. And as you, as you head up, you follow the burn up the hillside and you come across a series of further waterfalls which are even more impressive, although you can't get to the bottom of them. The view from the top of the cliffs down from this is fairly impressive. I headed further up the path and, yeah, oh, to my disappointment, the weather didn't seem to be changing. That thick car coming in off the sea didn't seem to be shifting. I wasn't sure if I was going to see any blue skies at all, to be honest with you. Well, this isn't uh, isn't going as planned weather-wise. As you can see, I've got my oh, we see here. Oh, got my sun hat on and my sunglasses, and the forecast was for this cloud to lift a few hours ago, but it's not. There's a bit of a stiffer westerly wind coming in, which is just blowing this har, as you can see behind me, in and over the mountains. I'm really quite hoping that that, uh, that, that wind swings round and, and the sun comes out, perhaps, or at least if the cloud lowers later on, we might get an inversion, but at the moment, it's... <laughs> It's not looking too good because I was coming up here to camp because I was coming for the view specifically from the top of this mountain, which I'll talk about a wee while ago. I, I reread my blog that I wrote from 2014, and uh, I'm really, really hoping that we can see something at the top here. But yeah, so far it's not going as I was, uh, yeah, as I was hoping. So I'm just going to take my time, take as long as I can to get to the top because if it does lift. Yeah, the longer I take, the more chance it has of doing that before I get to the top. Anyway, right, enough waffling. Let's go. Oh. Right, I'm being a bit lazy and uh, I've not put my microphone on so hopefully you can hear this okay but there is the mountain I'm going up behind me and the, the clouds starting to clear a little bit which is great news but uh, I'm basically going up to the saddle behind me and then from that saddle I'm breaking right and going up the skyline it's quite a steep pull to the top of it but it really is turning out not too bad now the wind's dropped down or, or I've got a wee bit of shelter from the mountain and the cloud I can see the, the grey I'm over there now this hill 
and this magnificent mountain on the other side of the glen, which I'll talk about later on. I'm going to, uh, going to concentrate on getting across the, the stream now, and then it's more steeply uphill to the campsite. So. Less talking, let's get walking. Woo. Right. So I successfully made it over the wee stream, the Alt or Desian. It must be noted if you're trying to come up here and do this after some prolonged rain or heavy rain, this might prove to be a bit of a showstopper because uh, I was lucky enough it was it was quite low, but I can imagine that in full spate this would be uh, yeah this would this would stop your ascent for sure. But I got across and then I was soon up onto some pathless bog, which was yeah well it was like a bog really wet, soggy, and midge infested. Right, so we're getting a bit higher up now, it was a bit of a breeze, I tell you. Further down towards the river there wasn't much of a breeze and the midge were chasing me up the hill. And every now and again the breeze dies and they come out of this moorland and uh, say hello. Anyway, hopefully you can see, let me just move it over a bit, the hill behind me, there we go, I've got about another, I don't know, two kilometres to go and about... I don't know, 300 metres of ascent, so this bit's going to be a fight, the final pool's going to be quite tough, but the, the promising thing is, there's blue sky starting to appear, so I might have timed it perfectly, because although it's been cloudy on the way up, it's kept the temperature down a wee bit, which has been quite nice, I think had it been blazing sunshine all the way up, it would have, uh, I would have been a bit more dehydrated and in the need of more water, but so far so good. Just need to do this final steep pool and then uh, try and find somewhere suitable to pitch the tent, so let's get cracked on. As I made my way up the hillside and past the bog, the clouds started to clear and the blue skies got wider and wider. It really put a spring on my step. It was looking good, and in fact, it was looking very, very good and promising for the rest of the trip as I started to climb up and out of the cloud. Oh yee well, this is this is special now. <laughs> I take it all back when I said I thought I'd uh, got it all wrong. I'm actually above the clouds now, fantastic. Inland it's kind of clear but this, this harsh kind of rolling in off the sea out to my west there, just one big bank of, of cloud and as it's coming in it's making its way in and out of these mountains and to the south of me here is the hills of Fisherfield and uh, rising up above the cloud. So I'm not I'm not too far from the summit now. I've been taking my time and just enjoying this because when the cloud cleared I can just it's, the view just opened up and it's just it's just perfect now. So hopefully it stays like this uh, for the rest of the camp. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna head up try and find the pitch. I've just seen but I think I can see more of them. There's some goats just behind the camera. So hopefully they're friendly goats and uh yeah, they'll not, uh, they'll not come over and uh, annoy me too much <laughs> during the camp. Anyway, look at that, eh? Can't beat it. Right, let's get, let's get up to the top. Yeehaw. As I climbed up the hill, the views got better and better and I got higher and higher <clears throat> above the clouds and those goats were still there. They were, they were quite inquisitive actually, they didn't scatter like I thought they would when I got a wee bit close to them. But they were keeping a safe distance, that was for sure. And as I approached the summit of Sailmore, there were certainly a few, a few of them there as a welcoming party. Uh, around the actual summit cairn. They were obviously getting up there to, to try and get some breeze because it was pretty still at the moment. Anyway, 
They soon moved away from the top and I was reaching the summit of the mountain. After touching the summit, I didn't I didn't linger because I knew there was a second cairn and a second summit which was a bit lower, and I wanted to head over to, over to that just to check out the views and perhaps check out the the lay of the land between the two summits to see to see if there was any decent pitches to be honest with you, but the views from here were just yeah just spectacular under that that blue sky it was lovely so at this point I thought I'd I'd take the big backpack off. And perhaps just just have a wee seat to myself and stock up in jelly babies before deciding where to pitch the tent. Right here I am at one of the summits. This is the bigger cairn actually. I think the main summit is the southern one there. It looks a bit higher, and it's just fantastic. There's a wee breeze, so no midges, and the, the biggest problem I've got now is actually where I'm going to pitch the tent. Do I pitch it on this side over here so I get a view of these magnificent mountains over here? Look at that, I don't know if you'll make them out on the camera, but over to Anchelic and the Fisherfields, Ben Gerrard and beyond. Or do I come over here, just over this side, and get a porch view out to sea? Look at this. Hopefully you can make that out. Down over, that's the Summer Isles down there. And the next stop beyond that, I think I'll be the Outer Hebrides. If not, to Canada or Greenland or somewhere like that. <laughs> I think I'm going to go for this side. I'm going to go for the sea view because I don't get that as often. So I'm going to sit and just enjoy it for a wee while before I, um, before I find the pitching spot and put the tent up. It's just absolutely lovely though. Well worth the effort. Look at that. Woo! After scouting about a little bit, I decided on a lovely, lovely flat pitch, which actually had uh, views in both directions, over to the, the Fisherfield Forest, and also you could see the, the western seaboard and out to the Atlantic. I was, yeah, I was pretty, pretty pleased with myself and the pitch that I'd found. So all, all it was set to do now was that, that routine of uh, yeah, getting the tent up and the sleeping pad and sleeping bag ready. I was keen to get it up so I could just kick back and relax for a few hours. This is just stunning, absolutely stunning. And I've spent, uh, I've spent the last few while. Well, I'll put the tent up. I think it was the last time you saw me. Is you? Uh, oh, let me take this hat off. Get a bit of breeze around me. Oh, yeah. So I've got the tent up, and I sort of lay in it for a while. But it was getting warm. You know that you, you can't really sit in a tent when the weather's like this, nice and sunny. So I've come up to the summit and there's a lovely breeze and there's there's no midges, but I tell you what there is. There's lots of deer kids which are a pain in the backside. You can feel them latching onto you and you have to actually pinch them to get them off. Um, they're an absolute pain. But anyway, apart from that, it's absolutely idyllic. I mean look at this. I'm looking basically straight into Fisherfield. And there's a there's an inversion over there and there's low clouds a bit further south. Behind you it's now clear which is great because I was hoping to get the sun coming, you know, going down over the sea which uh, I'll hopefully capture later on but yeah the time is it's nearly 7 o'clock so I'm going to sit here for a bit longer and then I'm going to get some tea on and uh, yeah I'll probably 
report back to you uh, uh, after I've made my tea and had a bite to eat and we'll see what the sunset is going to do. I mean, it's not going to be uh, a colourful sky because there's absolutely no, there's no clouds in the sky at all. But yeah, I'm not going to complain. This is just, it's not often you get this in Scotland. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to enjoy it. So with dinner made, I sat on the summit and just soaked in those views whilst munching down on some well-earned, I think, <laughs> food. It was just lovely and what a place to have your dinner. After enjoying my dinner and those views, the wind just dropped right down. And I don't know if you can see from this footage the, uh, the hordes of midges that were just sitting outside the tent. So I, I retired to the tent for a wee while and just sat in there and, and relaxed and got away from away from the midge and just hoped that the breeze would perhaps pick up later on for uh, yeah for sunset. Well, this is just absolutely stunning and unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately the winds dropped right down and I say unfortunately because uh, that means that in, in addition to the, uh, the deer kids that were sort of landing on me before the midge have now joined them and also all their brothers and sisters seem to have uh, <laughs> seem to have come out anyway I am uh, I'm on the southern top now and this has got a bigger cairn but it's slightly lower than the summit I was on where I was having my uh, having my tea and the views from this uh, this cairn here are absolutely spectacular and it is just amazing the view I've got over my shoulder here right down down the loch out to the summer isles is just I, I, it does feel like I'm on that sorry I'm getting you know you know life here <laughs> feels like I'm on a big massive boat and I wrote that I, I did a blog I wrote a blog uh, when I was up here in 2014 and I did say that I thought that the, the feeling of this hill is very much like a mountain island it feels like you're on a big massive big massive uh, boat ploughing through the the uh, the moorland of Scotland and it almost feels like this mountain should be maybe 20 or 30 miles to the north in Ascent because it does feel like Sulvan or Stack Polly these are sort of big isolated hills which just rise out of the moorland absolutely fab so anyway I don't know what I'm going to do I don't know if I'm going to stay out here you can see I am itching and I need to get my midget net on <laughs> but anyway it's not long till uh, till sunset so I might go and sit back in the uh, in the tent for a wee while and just see if a breeze picks up I really hope it does because this is unbearable I need to get my midget net on but the views are just spectacular absolutely great I can't um, emphasize if you're going to come up this hill keep it for a clear day because um, behind behind me I've got Anchelach I've got the Fisherfield Hills which look magnificent specifically ben, the Ben Gerrard the two Ben Gerrards Ben Gerrard Moor and Ben Gerrard Beg. Both, I've still to do those, but those look fantastic. Right, time to run away from the midges this time. I might report back in a wee while, providing I don't get eaten alive here. If you come up here and you find a bunch of bones next to this cairn, you know I've been a victim of the dreaded midge, right? Let's go. Ah! Bloody things. 
After being forced inside and back to the tent for a wee while, I, I headed back out just to see what the, the midge conditions were like and it wasn't so bad as the sun started to drop, so I spent the next, next wee while just sitting on top of the mountain and enjoying the sunset. It was rather spectacular. Look at this. This is fantastic. Look at the time. It's 10 to 10. And oh, hopefully you can still see me. 10 to 10 and uh, the sun's gone down a good hour ago and the midges have disappeared with that which is good because they were it was more the deer kids which were a real pain in the backside. But uh, look at this. This is what it's all about. There's, there's just something special Something special about these mountains that are so close to the sea when you get the sort of combination of your you know, these, As I said before these mountains just rise out of the, the moor and then you just this is the, this is the, this is the Atlantic over here In fact, I think I can see I think it must be Clisham on the Outer Hebrides just sitting up there above the uh, above the sea with this orange glow across the horizon. It's just really really yeah, this is this is what it's all about, isn't it? Uh, the midges and the kids, maybe not, but, <laughs> but yeah, the darkness is is coming. I can see some stars over Anchelac, um to the uh, to the east of me. But yeah, just when you've got these views out here, the sea below me, you can see some of the the lights from some of the boats earlier on, which was just fantastic. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to sit in the tent for a bit longer. I might go out and take some do some astro, depending on how tired I am. At uh, this time of year, well, summer time, late summer, hmm, it doesn't really get that dark to be honest with you, but you can, you can sometimes get some nice star shots, so yeah, I'm going to stop yapping now, I'll go and finish my whiskey and have some peanuts, <laughs> that's, my, that's my treat to myself, and uh, yeah, hit the hay and see what the morning brings, lovely, right, oops, <sighs> fall over my guy lines.
The sun rises at an ungodly hour at this time of the year in Scotland, so it was a it was an early alarm call, and I uh, I was keen to get out of the tent to see what the conditions were going to be like. I must admit, I wasn't disappointed. Wow, well, what, a, what a morning to wake up to, it is, it's now 5.20 and it's just stunning, there's a wee breeze and I can't make out any noise at all, just that silence you get sometimes early in the morning in these sort of remoter places, to be fair I could hear motorbikes going along the road which is <laughs> probably as the crow flies uh, less than less than a kilometre from this spot just this just drops straight down to the road this way and anyway, as you can see behind me the fog banks have rolled in again They're a bit lower this time and uh, I can see north across Ascent and some of the hills are just popping out of this sea of fog it's lovely and over this way, I can see there's fog sort of making its way up the up the valley towards Fisherfield. I think anyway. So I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to get some coffee on as I usually do, have some breakfast, and I'm, I'm going to do that up at the main summit and see what the views are like up there. And then I'm going to watch the the sunrise over over this magnificent uh, landscape. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's much in the way of photo opportunities in terms of skies, but it's just it's just an amazing place in in these conditions. So anyway, I'm going to shut up. And we're going to get a brew on and far about the camera, I think. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. I spent the next wee while just watching the sun rise over the northeastern horizon before getting a brew ready. I can't think of any better breakfast spots that I've had in the last few years and, and the conditions were just perfect and I enjoyed my coffee and my, my breakfast with a view to die for and as I was sat there watching the sunrise I also noticed that the wild goats had returned they were obviously trying to get higher up the, the hillside now that the sun was out and try and catch a wee bit of a breeze so I sat and watched those, those guys for quite a while before leaving my perch and heading back over to to the tent and then further on over onto the summit to say hello to the goats. I 
after dropping some gear off at the tent, I headed up towards the main summit. And I must admit, I, I saw lots of goats on this trip, but not any sheep. And that might have something to do with the history. If you search Grunaird Island, which lies just off the coast here, you might find out more. I'll leave that for yourselves to do. Anyway, I got up to the top and I decided to take a few snaps on my phone of the goats as they were grazing on the hillside. Lovely. Well, the sun's well and truly up now and there's, there's a bit of heat in it. I think I'll be taking this jacket off when I'm uh, heading off the hill. This has been fabulous. I've come over to the uh, the main summit now. I'd, uh, I had my coffee over there because I wanted to see the sun rising above this blanket of cloud and I could see Ben Klebrick as well as all the ascent hills. Oh, it's just, <laughs> just fantastic. I don't know if you can make it out. That's Ancella over my shoulder. I might have said that already, but... It's still, you know, it's an impressive mountain from this side. I know that the, the the main view of it is even more impressive. And I was up there, I was going to camp up there in the winter a few years ago. Um, but the, the weather was on the slide. But that's the other side of it is super impressive. And most folk got that side, which is understandable. I, I would too. But even from this side, it looks pretty, pretty good, to be honest with you. The back side of Ancelica, and this hill is almost like a continuation of it. Although it just sits, sits slightly slightly by itself. Anyway, it's been fantastic. Um, as I said, the sun's up now. There's still some low-lying fog, so I'll get some nice views on the way down, I think. And it's just been great, you know, having the, as I said yeah, last night, this, this does feel like a big bow of a ship. And it's just ploughing through the moorland. Oh, my GMI. And uh, especially when you've got all this fog below you, it just, I think they call them an Inselberg. And uh, it does feel like it should be like a bit further north than Ascent, but it's lovely. I'm going to go ahead and uh, straight camp now, make sure that I uh, leave everything the way I found it. Oh, and I meant to say as well, I was joined, I don't know, you might have seen the footage, but I was joined by some, uh, by the goats, the goats had come up here. And uh, yeah, they, I got quite close to them actually, they, they did scatter eventually, but uh, lovely, lo lo lots of wildlife. So anyway, I'm going to shut up now, sit here for a bit longer before going and uh, yeah, taking my home away and packing it in my backpack. So after enjoying a leisurely morning and enjoying those fabulous views, it was soon time to start thinking about heading back down to the car. So it was, it was back to the tent to to strike the strike camp and get all the tent gear and all the gear back into my rucksack for the uh, the journey back down to the car. I really, really didn't want to leave the summit. If I'm honest with you, but what an adventure! What a hill! And for sure, leave this for a good day, and hopefully you'll experience some of the some of the adventure I did in this trip. Until the next time, stay safe out there, and I'll see you on the next adventure.